Hey guys, my name is Noah Levy and this is Noah's Ark. So every month I introduce you to one of my friends and we ask him certain questions about why are you in New York? What makes you stay here? What interests you? What are your passions? And what are you up to next? I'm so glad you guys were joining me. I'm learning a lot and I hope you will also. Here we go. So excited for this week's guest because she's a very close friend of mine and somebody that I consider to be a legend. And her head just got this much bigger. This <laughs> is Lisa Lampanelli. Hey. Hey. And, and her as long as my ass didn't get that much bigger because <laughs> I worked a long time on getting the suede off. No muffin top showing. No muffin top. I don't top. care. Let me tell you. Yeah, tell no me. matter what age you get, I'm 53. No matter how much weight you lose, you're always going to have a tiny bit of a muffin top. Right. Or a camel toe. So I just had to like make sure I didn't have either. People know you as, and correct me, um, as a insult comic. Right. Many have called you the queen of mean. Mm -hmm. People know you as your stage persona, but mm -hmm. of course, like most performers, you're not like that right. at all. Right. And I feel like you're going through an interesting transition in your career where the real Lisa is actually gonna start to show. Yeah, it's funny because the new special I just filmed is called Back to the Drawing Board. And I, the reason I called it that was because it's like I'm sort of back to what I originally was, sort of storytelling comic, right. comic who tells more about my life. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I built my whole career as an insult comic because of one guy heckling me on my third performance ever. And it was from one performance? It, exactly. Some guy yelled because I was actually really, you know, I was really funny when I started, but just right. beginning. And a different comic went up after me and he was sucking wind. And the guy yelled, Bring back the fat chick. So, most people who had some self-esteem would have heard the bring back part. All I heard was the fat part. And you know, when you're, you're a fat human. bitch, that's all you care about because that's the worst word ever to you. I started comedy when I was 30. I mm. always knew no matter what I look like, no matter what I wear, no matter how I talk, they're gonna still like me. So I had no fear that once I lost the weight, they were still gonna be into me. Because you don't like get the operation and suddenly the fat gene gets sucked out of you. Right. I may have lost the weight, but I'm still that you know, flawed human being that everybody else is. And in some ways, because I know people who've been overweight that have lost weight, do you still view yourself in your head as that former person? Well, no, that's the thing. I never viewed myself as a fat person because what happened was- Really? Well, because I was, didn't gain weight till I was 18. So I went away to college at 18. I talk about that in my special and that's when everything blew up. I was lonely, everything kind of got out of control and I used food as medication. And right. then when I did the operation and I got down to even below the weight that I was in high school, I was like, that's who I'm supposed to be, that's Lisa. That fat yeah. chick was just kind of a reaction to pain or loneliness or sadness. Right. Now, I think your story is important. I think it can actually change people's lives. Mm. And I think there's gonna be a giant reaction when people actually get to know the new Lisa Lampanelli in the mainstream, which mm. it hasn't, this debut has not been made yet and will right. be made shortly in your new special, which is gonna air on mm -hmm. Epics. Mm -hmm. Now, what fascinates me about you is you had a not so public breakup at all. You and your husband, Jimmy, yep. sweetest man. Right. You guys had a divorce. I didn't know about it. Right, right. Was this a really awful experience or is this a, freeing experience for you. Oh my God, you. it was the most transformative, second most transformative thing to happen in my life, to have an amicable divorce. Wendy Williams said it to me on her show when I told the whole story, she was like, that's just not possible. And after she heard the story, she goes, well, if you can do it, the rest of us can. Wow. Like there doesn't have to be a lot of anger and hate because we were smart enough to catch it before anybody cheated, anybody lied, anybody stole, anybody did anything that you could get really angry about. We just both realized that it's just not what a marriage is supposed to feel like. It's not meant to be. We're supposed to be with other people. We're supposed to be with people who get us more. Mm -hmm. I didn't get him, he didn't get me, and that's okay. You're tough, you're smart, mm -hmm. but now people are starting to understand that you're introspective mm -hmm. and you figured some shit out about yourself. What's your advice to fans that you have about getting ejected? We'll say that, ah. getting ejected from a relationship. Remember the guy who wrote that book, He's Just Not That Into yes. You, Greg Barrett? Yeah. He also wrote a book called it's called a breakup because it's broken. Yeah. And I got that years ago, seven, eight years ago with a different breakup. And it's very lighthearted, but heavy too at the same time, which I love. Cause mm -hmm. I like the fact that I'm moving in a direction with comedy of having a message, but also being lighthearted. And it really takes you through exercises of how to do a breakup honorably. You have sold out Radio City Music Hall, mm -hmm. Carnegie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've hosted 
so many Comedy Central roasts, mm -hmm. sold out tours around the country. Right. What is next for you? Once my father died, I really felt as if comedy sort of had no meaning for me anymore. And I figured out how to use humor to get a message across instead about self-care. So I've adopted the new name for my next special after this one I want to call Spiritual Gangster because it's sort of going to be my journey about from my father dying, who is my most special person in the world, and how I took care of him to sort of missing that service to other people and having the rest of my life be service for you, the audience, or you in my daily life. This is your next chapter. I am so excited for it. I'm glad we got to spend this time together and yes. we can share your message with our viewers. Um, this has been a great episode of Noah's Ark. I can't wait for you guys to join us next time. And Lisa Lampanelli. Yay! Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Love You're you. the best. Thank you. I love you, man. God bless. Love you. We're starting to recognize you as someone who's really funny organically. Yeah. Like, well, that's where the show helped yes. so much because I'm not so much a